What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we are going to be doing zooming. Um, I will also show you how to do zooming like a slow zoom to aim down sights. So next episode, or one of the, the sooner uh, future episodes, will actually be changing animations in the first person perspective here. So you'll actually be able to aim down the gun. Now this gun doesn't have a sight on it or anything like that, but we'll do some crazy stuff to make that work the way that you're thinking of. <laughs> Uh, basically though, what we're going to be doing today is just getting the actual zoom functionality in. We can change our positions to whatever we want, being our zoomed out and zoomed in variables. And then once we do that, we can easily figure out how we are going to set it up for actually aiming down sights, looking through like a red dot sight or a sniper scope or whatever it is you're going to be using. Also going to go over some safety tips in terms of crashing and avoiding crashing code and writing like better code. So here we go. Let's get into it. This one should be a pretty short episode. So I'm gonna try and make it real nice and simple. Okay, so let's go back to here. So if you were following the first episode of this tutorial, uh, you'll know that we used the first person shooter template in Unreal Engine 4. If you weren't following it, I'll link the iCard in the top right corner here in case you wanna check it out so you can be on the same exact page as we are. If not, and you just care about the, the zooming in, then that's totally fine too. But just know that you should have you should be using the first person shooter template or your own template where you have the ability to both access blueprint and code. Okay. Once you can access code, go ahead and go to your character. So it's basically going to be and I say this pretty much episodes, so sorry for the people who keep watching that <laughs> this is getting repetitive, but it's gonna be the name of your project minus FPS tutorial character dot h and dot cpp. These are like your base characters for the project. So they're not Unreal's base character class, but they're your character class and header files for your project specifically. So this is where you're going to do all your functionality for your own characters in the base class. Okay, so if you go here, scroll down to where you see variables, like you can see classes and uint 32 is being set here. So in the last episode we did sprinting, which is this bool is sprinting. Uh, you should also add a bool is zoomed in if you want to add animations and or aim down sights functionality to your game. You should probably add a boolean to determine if you're zoomed in or not, and that's what this whole boolean for is sprinting is also used for. These are going to be used in the animation blueprint to determine if we should go to a different state. Okay. That's all those do, so you can look at them, copy them, name them, whatever you want. This U property line just determines what Unreal the engine can actually do with the variable as opposed to just the code. Since I'm the only one working on this project, uh, I pretty much keep everything open and easy for myself to access. Generally, you would not want everyone, all your variables to be edit anywhere, but it's fine for a personal project and it's also fine for getting started, of course. Okay, so there's that. Um, and then lastly, what you're going to want to do, and if you watch the first episode, you'll know we made sprint and stop sprinting. We're going to do essentially the same thing, but do zoom in and stop zoom. Or we could call it zoom and stop zoom, whatever. But basically, these are just functions that we're making so that we can zoom in when we are pressing a button, and it automatically zooms out when we're releasing that button. Okay, easy peasy. Now if we go to the C++ side of things, and not the header file, so the CPP file, we're going to go down to the, the constructor, which is the very first function here in the file. I usually put everything at the bottom, so I know where to find them. And just set your default variables to false. Is sprinting and is zoomed in should both be false, because unless you want to be zoomed in to start the game for whatever reason, which is possible that you might want that. Okay, and then this is the most important part here. The rest of it was just kind of set up in personal preference. But this part is very important for this tutorial. So this basically is the setup player input component function. So if you watch the sprint uh, episode, you'll know that we've already done this. However, we're going to need to do it again for zooming in and zooming out. So what this function does, I'll go into it in a little bit more depth, is it takes an input that you give it so any input device you have, it can even do things as crazy as like uh, voice commands, VR, things like that. But usually it's going to be keys on a keyboard, 
uh, just buttons on a controller or a mouse. It's going to bind a function or bind a name that you give it as basically the command input that you're giving it and call a function when that is pressed. Now that probably won't make sense if you're not familiar with it, so I'm going to show you. So this, a lot of these will be here if you scroll down to the setup player input uh, component. The only ones I added are sprint and zoom in. So you can copy the others and look at them for reference as well. But here's what's actually going on here. If you go into the editor and go to edit, project settings, and then go to input, you'll see that there is jump, fire, reset VR in here. Now I've added sprint and zoom in, but basically these are what's called action mapping. So these are when you press the button, which you define the button here, then say, hey, tell the code that this command was pressed. So you just press, a, press the plus button here to add an action mapping. Go to your zoom in right here, or go to your new one, call it zoom in or zoom or whatever it is you're trying to do. And then select the drop down box and type in right mouse button, or whatever button you're using to zoom. Mine's right mouse button. There you go, and then select it, and then you have your command name, and you have your button that you're going to be using it. Axis mappings are for things that you're going to continuously be pressing that have different values. So, like a joystick has a lot of values between just one and zero. That would be an axis mapping. Any sort of buttons where it's just on or off, pressed or not pressed, is an action mapping. Okay, so you can close that when you're done. Then, in your bind action function, which again, you can copy from the fire function directly above, write the name of the command that you typed in. Mine was zoom in, remember? Just like mine was sprint last episode. And then you're going to want a pressed and release. So when I press it, I want to call the zoom in function. When I release it, I want to call the stop zoom function. Okay. Now, we're going to go make our actual function so that something happens when they get called. And it's the exact same process as last time as well. So, basically make your functions. Zoom in. Stop zoom. Now, here's what I was talking about earlier about good programming practices and avoiding crashing. So, the reason I wanted to bring this up now is I'm going to be doing a lot of this, and I think it's good to familiarize ourselves with this before I get too far into it. Because it looks kind of confusing, especially when this is the first time you're looking at it. You're like an if statement where you're defining a variable. Yeah, it's a bit weird, and I had a little bit of trouble understanding it at first, but let me go over this. So, you know what an if statement is, right? If statement basically checks if the conditions you give in here are accurate. And if they're true or false, if they're true, you go inside of it and do the logic. If they're not true, you skip over this, this code block, okay? So here, what we're doing, instead of a, a normal if statement, like in above, where it says if value is not equal to zero, we're saying if this, value, this uh, variable that we're making equals this, get character movement. What this is saying is if get character movement returns something other than null or no null pointer, which means zero essentially, it basically means an object that doesn't have any sort of reference or value. It's just an empty, it could be deleted, it could be a corrupt, it could be anything that's not something that's going to make the game cr crash. Um, as long as it's not that value, this will evaluate to whatever this returns, right? So this is saying, okay, if this variable is not null pointer, then assign it to here. Character movement. And the only reason to do that is just because if character movement was null here in the sprint function, then you actually would crash when trying to use this operation there, operator. Because if you do null max walk speed, it, the compiler is still going to run that, and you're going to get a crash. So it's important to note that just because you're going to see this a lot, I use it for both sprint, stop sprinting, and then zoom in, stop zoom. So basically, what we're going to do for zoom in and stop zoom is really easy, really simple. We're going to uh, assign a variable, auto. Auto just means it's going to pick the type for you based on whatever value gets set to this variable. 
So it's like you don't need to explicitly assign a, a, a variable type. It will do it for you. This is good for complex types like first person camera component, which is a U camera component pointer, right? Auto will automatically do that for you. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to do Boolean or int or anything like that. Okay. So if auto first person camera equals this component. So if this first person camera component exists, which if we look on our character, which is here, first person character two, he's got a first person camera component right here. Then we want to go in here, back in the code, and get the field of view, set the field of view, actually, to 70, which is zoomed in. And then when we release the zoom button, we want to set it back to 90, which is the default, which is zoomed out. And then just set your booleans accordingly. Is zoomed in, is zoomed out. Or is zoomed in equals true, and is zoomed in equals false. These just, again, will be used for aiming down sights, so we actually know what animation to put on the player and or the weapon. So these will be useful later. We're not going to use them today, but something you should set up. But you can change this field of view to whatever you want. Like we could change it to 30. And we'll be really zoomed in. Make sure you build. But the whole point of this is the field of view is essentially how much degrees wise, like in degrees, you actually get to see. And you can see that here. So we'll compile here as well. So in the camera settings on the first person camera component, the field of view is a value in degrees, right? So the smaller this is means you still get to see the same amount of the screen size, but you have a let as a um, smaller field of view. So you have a smaller angle at which you can see things. Thus, your zoom is more. Does that make sense? So we have 90 degrees worth of angle right now. So we have 90, 180, 270, 360, right? But 90 degrees is covered by this. So what that means essentially is if you only have 30 degrees, then you're still going to see the same width and height in terms of like uh, pixels and how big your window is. It's not gonna like change the size of your window. But now you have a smaller field of view, which essentially equates to a zoom, okay? And if you have a bigger field of view, like the 90, then you see you zoom out. And we can uh, demonstrate this even a bit further if we were to do, I'll keep it at like a solid 50. And we could do a solid, you don't wanna do 180 or anything like that because that'll do weird stuff because math. You can try it to see it, but we could do like 130 should be okay. We'll build and compile again. But you can play around with this. And also, it, it's probably going to be useful to not give it a hard coded value. Oops, I did not compile. I made a I made a beginner's mistake. Make sure you compile or rebuild Visual Studio. You can do build, rebuild either way. So there you go. So now you're like, whoa, he's really far zoomed out. Yep, it is true. But that is what I essentially assigned it. So th there's probably very little that you want this. But if you're, say, an Apex Legends player, for example, you'll see that Bloodhound's field of view actually gets a lot higher when he goes into his ultimate. So this is a perfect example of when you might want to use this. Now I'm going to set it back to 90 because that's what the, the template is intended to be used at. And it's usually a pretty good field of view. But the zoom at 50 is probably pretty good. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll leave it at 50. I'm just going to build again for my own sake because I'm going to do, be doing more with it after this video. But anyway, so there you go. You can see now uh, you can do some crazy stuff with zooming in and out. And then your gun still works. Everything still works as normal. You're not changing anything with the game. You're just changing the camera view. Also pretty funny how long this gun is. I never realized it. The stock is huge on that thing. <laughs> okay, guys. So that's basically the end of what I was trying to teach you today about the zoom in, zoom out, and also the good code practices because I wanted to teach you about the auto keyword in C++ um, being used with Unreal like that. And I also wanted to kind of fix some of my own mistakes where I added if statements where there weren't any, which crashes could happen if anything 
if any logic ran before the game loaded properly. So, you know, I figure it's good to not teach you guys to <laughs> include crashes in your game, so I thought you guys might benefit from learning that. But anyway, that's all I have for today's episode. We will be doing animations, like I said, uh, aim down sights, and zooming in like a sniper scope, which will be slightly different in different episodes. So you'll get to see those, check those out, and see how to actually put an animation on the gun when you're zooming in. That way it's like right in front of your face. Although I will say this is like Counter-Strike. If you played Counter-Strike, you just kind of crouch down and it just kind of zooms in. Not this much, but... Yep. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching this episode. Um, if you enjoyed, please, please subscribe. It helps me more than anything else you can do. And I just really appreciate it, and it would let me know that you're interested in this type of video. Uh, more importantly, actually... Make sure you comment down below for what types of videos you want to see. The whole reason I'm doing this series is because a lot of people were actually starting to ask for it. I had, a, I had like three people in particular that have been watching my videos um, and been giving me a ton of support. And they're like, hey, can you do a first person shooter tutorial? Absolutely. Right? Because the whole reason I'm doing these videos is to help people. So if that's what you're in the mood to find and that helps you, then of course. 100% definitely. So let me know any questions you have about this specific tutorial or about other tutorials or other uh, concepts that you want to know about. Also, guys, just a quick note, and I've been saying this in my other video, but you guys have actually kept coming over to support me, so I really appreciate it. Um, I started Twitch streaming probably about a month and a half ago now, and I just wanted to kind of say if you're interested in going and checking it out, uh, it's Sean the Bro 27, so twitch.tv slash Sean the Bro 27, and we usually we've been doing multiplayer games like Apex Legends and Call of Duty Warzone, but recently uh, we did a Doom Eternal stream, which was a ton of fun with you guys there. So I just want to say thanks again for all the support you guys gave, and yeah, feel free to stop by and check in with me, get to know me on a personal basis as opposed to just a faceless YouTube guy. <laughs> Okay, guys, and before I end this episode, I will just advertise the Discord as well, because uh, the Discord is actually intended for programmers to come in and ask questions. The YouTube comment system isn't as useful for answering coding questions and formatting coding questions as Discord is, especially because you can just ask me a question and I can answer right on my phone very easily. But we have a community of about 45 people now, and they can also help with your programming issues if I am not around. So if you have any specific questions you would like answered or any specific topics you'd like to talk about, that's a great place to join. I can't link in an iCard or anything because of the way YouTube works, but you can find it in the description and it can be very useful for any like difficult programming questions that I can't answer on YouTube or I can't answer easily in the YouTube comment section. I can also use pictures and videos over the discord which i can't do which helps a lot so anyway guys that's just you know if you're interested in getting more help from a nice community but anyway guys that's it for me thank you so much for watching this video i'm sean the bro and i'll see you in the next one